Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we have some legacy from our weekly legacy series every Wednesday and Friday night at 7 o'clock. We do four rounds of legacy action. Michael on Storm versus Nathan on Bug Delver. The last two players standing here fighting for first place. And we've got a underground sea being put to the bottom. And a ponder. It's actually possible that the first seeds drew. This might actually not be the, the finals match, but we should see some high level play regardless. And a ponder is not it is going to be good enough. Often a bad sign when your opponent keeps off of a ponder kind of the best case scenario is they were looking for mana and found the mana otherwise if they were just kind of improving the quality of their hand the bar is pretty high for people to keep Fetch lands a consideration with that calculation as well. Often there'll be one card in there that you're super psyched about, uh, but if you're going to get stuck with the other two, that can be too high a price for it. Now we've got a dark ritual. One mana responses Delver of Secrets on Nathan's side. The dark ritual from Michael looks like it's going to get pushed aside with this spell pierce. And it is. Michael's mana base does look pretty solid, though. He's got those basic lands, so at least wastelands from Nathan, if he draws them, will not be able to pester his mana base. And another Dark Ritual into Duress this time. That clears a daze. Nathan not using the daze. That would have actually added some additional storm. One black left floating after this pair of discard spells from Michael and now double cabal ritual five and then eight black mana and a storm count of five six seven and that's going to be a wrap infernal tutor crack led that's just how you draw it up he's going to be able to grab past and flames and do it all over again and that is exactly the line he takes Sometimes people do get tunnel vision with Storm, especially when they're new at the deck. Uh, Ad nauseum leads to so many wins uh, that it's very easy to forget about the Pass and Flames line or just automatically go with the Ad nauseum when your life total is uh, basically you know, your starting life total. That does give away some percentage points. Obviously, you can fail off of an Ad nauseum. Uh, post board, it's a little more complicated because then you're playing against things like Surgical Extraction, Fairy Macabre, kind of additional elements of disruption that you may not be aware of if your discard spells haven't resolved. Or even if they have and you've had to pass the turn or if cantrips are involved, there's a lot of things that can go sideways with Pass in Flames. And of course there are permanents on board, a little less tricky. Uh, but things like Graph Digger's Cage, which, I mean, I've misplayed against before. I've, I've had a comical match uh, several years ago now, uh, right around the time that uh, Ixalan came out. Uh, but I was playing against a Goblins player at a shop that had standing room only. We were actually playing on like a 8-foot uh, wide, 8-foot uh, long, 4-foot wide, like, wargaming table basically like a sheet of plywood and uh, there was some serious table space between me and my opponent and uh, he was on goblins and he put out a aether vial and a graph digger's cage and i thought he had two vials it's just really suboptimal on my end went through this whole sequence of plays and then cast past past in flames to win the game and uh just didn't do anything i, I won the other two games because goblins is just a extraordinarily poor matchup for uh, 
for Storm. Uh, Goblins is a terrible uh, lines up terribly with Storm. It's a great matchup for Storm. Storm is Goblins' uh, worst nightmare. Essentially, there's very little they can do to interact with it, uh, aside from their opponents blundering terribly. Though they can put some pressure. I mean, Goblins can hold people accountable with like a turn three win. If you keep a speculative hand and dirtle too long, things can definitely be punished with uh, with poor keeps. But Bug Delver, obviously not going to outrace Storm. They are going to attempt to contain the explosiveness of this deck with discards, counter spells, and a clock to chip away at the life total. It's probably one of the best position decks possible versus Storm. Spell Pierce Days, Force of Will, cheap or free counters to uh, keep Storm from actually ending things. And then uh, Veil of Summer, an incredibly powerful card blanking both discard and guaranteeing a turn that's something that if you haven't been on the other side of storm with veil of summer it, it really does provide quite a lot of relief it protects you from that discard spell and then for the rest of the turn they're not going to be able to tendrils you guaranteeing that you're going to have a chance to move forward at least a little bit on your turn get the extra card see if you can do some more disruption and of course, all of their resources that turn are going to be wasted. Brazen Borrower, perhaps? Force of Will? Turn 1 Delver was not the case here, but he looks like he still may be fine as he's got a bunch of cantrips to improve the quality of his hand. Brainstorm now for Michael with his fetch land. So this game playing out a little bit slower. Nathan with that turn one ponder. Getting down a Delver after. Delver will be flipping. Thanks to this ponder. Shows a force of will. And Michael... From that force, maybe thinking that his time has passed for this game. When your opponent ponders and leaves a force on top, that does not feel great when you're a Storm player. That force of will obviously is a card they desperately want in their hand, and if they're confident enough to leave it on top of the deck, it's not great. Thought sees the first one was stopped by Veil of Summer, and now Nathan gets to show him all these Force Triple Days Brazen Borrower. Ponder from Michael takes a look, and he's actually going to scoop it up with that Leovold in play. Not a terrible terrible situation. I mean, it's really bad. Don't get me wrong. He's dead in two turns. He's got a Leovold on board. Uh, but playing Ponder into a Leovold is actually probably fine. Brainstorm is the real issue. When you draw three, put two back on top, that's great. When you draw one, put two back on top, that is very rarely actually part of a winning plan. But Ponder allows you to look at the top three, potentially find your answer to Leovold or your path to victory. If you don't see it, you can shuffle and you're not going to draw a card. Uh, but you at least get the shuffle and get those dead cards out of the way. Uh, probably better than not pondering, unless you actually have an answer to Leovold and that ponder would then be live after the fact. Game three, Michael on the play. No first turn kill. Nathan has his ideal opening here of a turn one Delver. It's going to be off of Underground Sea. His mana base not going to be much of a liability unless Michael has Carpet of Flowers. 
uh, but there's not too much that can be done about that aside from using days to manage the number of islands on board a collector oof and that is a very potent threat versus Michaels it shuts off his lotus petals and lion's eye diamonds and lion's eye diamond is really one of the most important cards in the deck the discarding effect so important to getting hellbent being able to tutor for any card once you go hellbent really the key element of the deck that makes it makes it so explosive it's essentially like playing with demonic tutor and black lotus when it all comes together perfectly Nathan going to be content to swing for 5 damage a turn once this Delver flips. Any other presence of the board will have to have some really powerful impact. We, we see a Leovold in his hand. That could certainly join the team. But if he draws any additional Delvers, likely to hold on to them to either brainstorm away or pitch to a force of will unless it actually increases the clock. We've got a daze on this first dark ritual. And Michael's got a question, uh, a decision to make here. Oh, looks like he's just going to let it... not entirely sure it looks like he actually let the days counter the dark ritual instead of paying the one um, I think paying the one would be better there and then with the three black dressing I'm not sure how he sequenced it or how he decided to do that force and double days in hand and this is looking very bad Leovold cutting out some of Michael's outs and now it's a one turn left to live. He's got to have it in hand. Leovold's not going to allow him to dig for it. If he does have any type of cantrips, he does not. And that's going to do it. Ad nauseum in hand at two life. Not going to do any good. And empty the Warrens. I believe that was empty the Warrens. That had given me some pause. That may have been the card he drew for turn. Is a empty could have potentially at least held off the ground forces. Lion's Eye Diamond wouldn't be able to be sacrificed, but you can cast it to add some extra storm. Uh, glad to see Storm back on the channel. It's a deck that is extremely challenging to play uh, flawlessly. And really, if you get a bunch of great players. Uh, playing, you know, kind of the same configuration. They're going to be making some different decisions. There's some little bit of art to the Storm matchup and uh, something that's, uh, for me at least, a, a lot of fun. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Ball Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, Tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.